Hello, Revive Youth Ministry. We begin our second week of Slow Your Roll. But first, I want to uh, ask a question before I get too far into it. And I want to say, when is the right thing to do the wrong thing to do? Seems like a weird question, but I want you to think about it. And before you answer to yourself, I want to tell you about my journey with the general auto insurance. So back in 2013, um, when I had moved to Tennessee, uh, I had started at the general as a temp. And with starting as the general as a temp, I then got very ambitious and I was ready to move and uh, just continue on within my career there. And so about seven months in, I got hired in full time with the company and uh, with getting hired in full time, then I was like, okay, well, time to get promoted. And so I applied for uh, the assist line coach position, and I took that position, and so I continued on in that for a while, and then I was getting ambitious, and I was like, oh, I want to be a team lead, and so I'm like, rapidly, anytime that things were popping up, I was going for it. Each time I uh, applied for it, the first couple of times, they were like, well, they don't feel like I'm the right candidate, and so then um, from there, my position got phased out, and so they moved me over to what is called the assist line, which was uh, taking phone calls and assisting people that work for the company uh, to answer questions in regards to that, among other things. And so they had transitioned me over to this, and I was like, well, my role had more rights, more abilities. I, it was more prestigious in a sense because of what I was able to do and taking on this p new position, even though they were giving me a raise and readjusted it to make it seem more glamorous. To me, it seemed like a step down. And so I decided that I would go for the team lead position again. And um, I got turned down once again. And um, I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to take this position and I'm going to work from home. That is my goal. I'm going to work for home because it's going to save me money. They're going to pay my internet. They're going to do all this. And so I'm working and working to go home. And uh, there's more and more delays. And so I finally get home. I am uh, working there. And I got adjusted to the lifestyle. And so a new team lead position opened up. And with a new team lead position, I applied. I interviewed and Afterwards, they told me that I killed the interview, which means I most likely would have gotten a position. But I had already gotten used to being at home, and they told me that I would have to not only come back into the office, but to work a later shift than what I was already working. And so I evaluated, and I was like, it doesn't seem the right time. It doesn't seem right. And so I turned down the position. And so then from there, I continued on. They allowed me to go part-time um, where I had every Wednesdays off. And I continued with that. And the ambition that I had for the general continued to start to change because I realized that God was not calling me to work for the general auto insurance. It was acting as a form of income, but God was like, you need to focus more on the ministry side of things. Give your time to it because you know this is where I have called you to be. And so from that point in time, everything that popped up, I was thinking to myself, oh, right now, I need to quit right now. Oh, they're doing this. That doesn't seem right. This seems like it's going against my beliefs. Oh, I need to quit. And so I kept coming and I'm talking about it and I'm praying about it and I'm going through it. And each time God's like, no, wait a second, just stay there a little bit longer. There's a reason, stay there a little bit longer. Well, early 2019, uh, Kayla had left uh, Wilson Bank and Trust because we were foster parents and um, she decided that she was going to be a stay-at-home mom to be with um, our foster son, since we weren't able to find daycares for a long time, just because they were all packed and full. And so she stayed home and she did that. And so if I would have left too early in, with them, then at that point in time, I went ahead the income. Whereas I go through and, um, there's other opportunities, there's, uh, something that popped up that I was like, uh, that doesn't seem right. Uh, this, this is my out. This is my opportunity to quit. 
But God was like, nope, just wait a little bit longer. Just wait a little bit longer. Finally, here in 2020, uh, back in March, just before a lot of this major stuff for COVID-19 kicked in, I had put in my two-week notice and I had left the general because I felt like it was the right time. Kayla had another job um, that she really enjoys that she's currently working at. And it allowed me to take time off to be able to focus more on the ministry side of things, among other things. So I go back to the question, when is the right thing to do the wrong thing to do? It's a tricky question because we know the right thing is the right thing to do. You can't deny it. You can't argue it. The right thing is the right thing. But the thing about it is it's all about timing. Was leaving the general uh, something that was fulfilling my calling? Yes, it was something that I was meant to do. I was supposed to leave them so I could focus more on ministry to move on to this aspect. Was leaving it back in 2019 the right thing? No. Is fulfilling God's calling the right thing? Yes. But it's all about timing. If I would have left way back in 2019, before a lot of things happened, I would have been out of income. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to pay our bills. There was just a lot that happened in 2019 that if I left too early, I would have had more of a downfall. It would have been the wrong timing. Versus in March, when I left the general, it was right before like the major things with COVID-19 happened. And so the daycare for our foster son that he was going to, they had just closed after opening recently because of the stay-at-home orders and things picking up and getting more serious. On top of that, Kayla is now working from home, which would have resulted in issues because then I would have been working from home, she would have been working from home, and we would have had too many people trying to sit in our office. See, and the other aspect of it is... I knew that I needed to get a higher education and continue to learn more uh, so that way when I'm ministering, it was bringing me to a better understanding to explain why I believe what I believe. And so within this timing, if I would have left too early before I had finished my bachelor's, I probably wouldn't have finished it as quickly, which means I wouldn't have continued on to try to do my ma master's. If I waited too long, then I would have probably kind of like, ah, I don't know. But God planned it to do it right at this time because now that we're at a stay-at-home order and that everybody is not able to go out into the public and just hang out like we used to, we have so much more free time. And there's been multiple situations where if I was working, I wouldn't have been able to take time away to spend time with our foster son just because of the aspect that I would have been working. And we would have had to figure out a whole nother aspect of what to do. Like I said, it's all about timing. The right thing isn't always the right thing for right now. So even though it's the right thing, always the whole thing, we get passionate about them. We want to run to do them, but to do so, may be to run ahead of God. It's important that we seek God's direction for our next step. I want to look at a situation in the Bible when we see God preventing Paul from doing the seemingly right thing. So Acts 16, 6 through 10 says, Next Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia, because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, 
they went on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. That night, Paul had a vision. A man from Macedonia in the northern Greece was standing there pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. So we decided to leave for Macedonia at once, having concluded that God was calling us to preach the good news there. So Paul had a desire to go to Asia. Why? Because he felt that they needed to hear the word of God. Asia had a large, untouched, unreached people. Asia had not been... Uh, fully reached with the gospel. And so Paul, knowing the right thing, he was like, I need to go there so that way I can tell them the word. But in verse 7, it says what? It says the Holy Spirit prevented them. God said no. Even no going and preaching his word was the right thing to do. Why did God say no? Because it wasn't his job. See, God had it where Peter was going to go there and reach out to Asia to preach the word. And so with it, knowing that Peter was going there, God had a plan for him to go somewhere else. Paul had a job for his own job to do, and that was to go to minister to another group. Acts sixteen fourteen through 15 says, One of them was Lydia from Thetira, a merchant of expensive purple cloth, who worshipped God. As she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart, and she accepted what Paul was saying. She and her household were baptized, and she asked us to be her guests. If you agree that I am a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at home. And she urged us until we agreed. Then in Acts sixteen twenty five through 34, around midnight, Paul and Silas were playing and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors open or wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. So what was Paul's job? It was to reach the people in Philippi, in Macedonia. God had people there who needed to hear the truth. Lydia, the jailer, their families, and their friends. It was Paul's job to go and tell them the gospel. Would, they, would the people have gotten saved if he had bypassed them and gone to Asia? Yes, probably. But would those people in Macedonia have been saved? I don't know. I believe so, but that was Paul's job to go there. God has specifically called him to do it. Fortunately, he listened to God and he did do it. And they were saved. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. 
Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. I think of a time where um, I was on my way, uh, this was back when I was working at the general, when I was on my way to work and I had the GPS on just because it's nice to have on sometimes just because you never know what to expect with the traffic. And so I'm on the highway, we get to the first hermitage exit um, just before the dam and the car just back up and it's then become stop and go. I knew that there was still miles to go before my exit was to come. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to follow the GPS. I'm going to get off here and I'm going to go around. I'm going to try to figure out another route. And so I get off and I take a left because I'm trying to loop around uh, to Bell Road and everything else. And so as I'm looping around, I get to the point where I need to cross the dam in that little area over like the Nashville shores and everything else. And so as I get off and I go that way, what ended up happening is that because traffic in Nashville is so bad, it actually built up right there as well for other people that are trying to get off the highway or other people in the neighborhood to go around. And so what ended up happening is I ended up being later than if I would have just stayed on the highway and followed the GPS. I thought that my wisdom of the area would bypass and override what the GPS had to say. I was going to get there faster than the GPS. See, we have to look to God to guide our steps. Even when we get excited and passionate about something that is good and right, we need to slow down and make sure we're going where God wants us to go, when he wants us to go there. We need to spend time seeking him and waiting on his direction. We're supposed to be walking in step with God and not running out ahead of him. It's not about what we're excited about, what has us passionate, or even what makes sense to us. Don't get too caught up in your own wisdom. Just slow down and walk with God to the places he wants you to go. When you run ahead of someone, especially when you don't fully know the direction, even though you think you know the direction, what happens is that's how people tend to get lost. So with it, um, I have a, we had a dog trainer that we took our dog to. And one of the things that she trained us to do is to make sure that when we're walking our dog, that we're keeping the dog to our side. And when the dog tries to run ahead of us, we're supposed to make quick turns, uh, whether it's right, left, come to a stop. And you do this frequently every time the dog goes ahead and starts to pull. The reason being is that what happens is when you do this, if you do it enough time, the dog is then saying, okay, I'm going to chill back because I don't know where this person's going to go. But imagine if I didn't have the dog on the leash and the dog ran ahead thinking that I was going to that location when in reality I had to make a quick stop and I had to go somewhere else. Even though the dog may have gone to the location that I planned on going down the road, it was the wrong timing for it because we were going and we were going to have a tree or we were going to eat ice cream or we were going to go do something else and now it's missing out because it got ahead. We tend to do the same thing with God because we get ahead of God and we're like, well, look at me. This is all I can do. And then we get sidetracked and we get lost and we get off the path. I feel like the reason why we have barriers, especially when it's something that we're supposed to do, is that when we get overly excited and we run towards it, God puts these barriers in like, no, Pump your brakes, there's a right time. As I mentioned with leaving the general, it was a right time because now I have started my master. Uh, financially, different money is coming in from different areas. And so right now was the perfect time for me to continue on with my degree. To go, go on to do my master's. And it's also the perfect time for me to fulfill the full-time aspect of ministry. Because COVID-19 has kicked in. It has kept us at home. It has uh, prevented us from going out many places. And so now I have a lot of time on my hands that allows me to further his purpose and further his plan. And because I have a job to do. I have certain things I need to do in a certain order. But I need to follow his steps. 
So as you continue out through this week, I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow at 5 p.m. for our Zoom meeting. Um, if you have questions about it, go ahead and send me a text. Uh, and if you're seeing this after we have our Zoom meeting, then I hope you enjoyed the Zoom meeting. But uh, as you go through this week, one thing that I want you to remember. Anyways, take the time, listen to what God has to say and follow his footsteps versus trying to run ahead of him. I'll see you next week.